So jazz music, from my perspective, is the highest developed form of music ever in the history of the planet. I was born in uh, Cape Town, South Africa, in uh, 1934. It was a suburb of Cape Town. It was one of those uh, uh, apartheid enclaves where we were allowed to stay. It was initiated with a with the slave trade. We were we were robbed of our of our traditional belief system. It was a, some of the jazz music that I listened to was, was Willis Conover, Voice of America. But our local our local stations also radio stations also played played jazz music. And then I got the, of being a pianist, I, I, interested in, in boogie boogie. So I listened to Albert Ammons, uh, Pete Johnson, Meet Lux Lewis, Boogie Woogie. And that's how I developed the left hand. So we uh, grew up playing in dance bands. Uh, but the, the, what they did was, uh, was take those Irish, Irish reels and put an African beat to it. <laughs> Tuxedo Junction, we played, what else did we play? Uh, Song of India, Glenn Miller, Joe Liggins, uh, and Basie and our own traditional music. And sometimes you, you couldn't differentiate whether it was a, a, a Kosa or a, or a Swana Riff or whether it was basic. No, it was, it was that close because it had this a call and response. Keep him okay him. So he was, he was like inspirational for us. And he, and he was the one that said to us, listen, well, I understand I play Mozart, you know, but we have to look at our own, our own music here. So we started researching our own traditional music. And then we realized the, 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 the complexity of it. And it was accepted in the community. Some, we played so many concerts. And then somebody organized for us to record. And it, it was quite unique because uh, recording studios were, were, were controlled by, by white, <laughs> white producers who told us what we need to play. So jazz puzzle was, was a breakthrough for us in many ways, politically, musically, socially. We knew what was going to happen in the end, that we were going to be liberated. There was no doubt about that. And then the ANC came and asked me and said, uh, will you play a more active role in this and, and really take, take the music to the world? We were playing in this little club in Zurich. And it was great for us because we, I met all of the, the, the jazz musicians who came through there. So we were just about, just about to close down when, when Satima walks in with Ellington and his whole entourage. So he came and said, OK, in two days' time, uh, you, you're all coming to Paris. You're coming to record. I said, what? <laughs> so we go to Paris. And I think this is also something that I, uh, that I learned from, from, from Ellington. He actually writes the song for the musicians. You have that dynamic of the musician actually being comfortable in his own. And then if you put it all together, you get the unique sound. And Ellington was a master at that. I mean, it's such a wonderful and great uh, self-enriching experience when you speak to the masters, and, you know, and, and, and understand the, the, the road and the path that, they, that they've taken, the selfless path. I was invited to play at the Nelson Mandela's uh, inauguration. And that day at the event, the whole world was there. Our music was healing songs. This was our, our, our duty and our role in, in society. And this is what jazz music does. It really gives you that insight into, into yourself because you constantly challenge yourself. And jazz music opens you to you. It opens you to yourself. 